All right, it's Justin with JNL Woodworks here in Dameron, Maryland. Um, I appreciate every appreciate everyone hanging in with me so far. This um, video production is actually I think it's a lot harder than than running a CNC machine. But anyway, I'm going to get into how I created the trim for this baby crib, along with the build process. Um, I'm going to try to make sure that I link all of the items that I use in the description. And I will have the free Vetric file located in the description of this video. So thanks for watching. Okay, we'll um, get started here in the baby crib. Um, unfortunately, I lost a lot of video, or actually all of the video of the joinery portion of the baby crib. But I can go through some of that. Um, the baby crib is made out of solid cherry. But of course, any type of lumber would be fine. I would stay away from any lumber from the big box stores. So um, when I say that, I mean building lumber. So two by fours, two by sixes, stuff like that. Even though it says kiln dried, it's not kiln dried to what we need for furniture. So you're looking at probably 18 to 20% moisture and most of the kiln dried building lumber that you see at, at the big box stores. And as an example, at 18 to 20% moisture, that's the time where the moisture content is dropped enough in the lumber where it would actually go into a kiln to be dried. The other benefit of true kiln dried lumber is it does kill all of the, the bugs and stuff like that that's, that's in the lumber. Powder post beetles um, are pretty common. So if you have someone that really knows what they're doing as far as kiln drying lumber, they'll allow that lumber to go through a sanitation cycle to get rid of all of the larva and, and things like that in there. So enough about the, the lumber part of it, but what I do is I, I buy mine rough sawn, as I said. So with this piece of furniture, I did some rough milling on the first day, and then I stacked my lumber with wooden spacers in between it's called stickering lets air get in between the lumber and it's to let the the lumber find its own equilibrium and you know, whenever we cut a piece of wood I'm, I'm sure we've all seen this that you know you you might get a bow you might end up with a twist and it's because we're releasing the tension in the grain the same thing happens when we're planing a piece of lumber um, surfacing a piece of lumber um, anyone's had a project they've done some pretty deep pocket cuts and things like that um, that you know to kind of twist on you so anyway good idea here to let that lumber acclimate for a day then go to your final surfacing the following day all right so enough about that here's the cut list um, the 26 slats at 27 inches this is for the, the front of the crib and then also the sides of the crib. Just keep in mind if you're doing a mortise and tenon you'll have to make those longer based on you know the tenon that you make. The 29 inch slats are for the back of the crib and then the vertical rails of course are, are on the sides here and I use the Festool Domino to join all of these parts together. Um, the crest rails 6 by 47 inches and then the lower rails all match that. Then we'll get into the front molding and the feet molding. Um, the next sheet is where the crib is adjustable. So this is really for reference right here. This, this is the um, support frame for the crib. But each one of these holes have metal inserts for machine screws and this is cut on the CNC and then the inserts are screwed in with an Allen. I'll have a link in the description below from um, Amazon on how to get them. The cutout of the back, I do have video of this. What I did to make this cutout, once I had my back of the crib put together, I took a piece of plywood and I cut a 90 degree reference on the left hand side so when I put this part on the CNC I knew I had a solid reference for 90 and with the gantry so I knew that this cut would be the way that I wanted it. I have one sheet with the size of the mattress. Um, the hanger jig 
or actually the hangers for the legs. I do have video of this. This is where the mortises are cut for the mortised hardware. So this is the, the two legs that I did at one time. Just remember that you have a left and a right. So they have to mirror themselves like this. The mattress supports, I cut these out on the CNC um, along with the corresponding through holes for the machine screws. So I'll have a link for those machine screws too. The only part of this that really, well not really, I couldn't cut on the CNC were the hangers for the front of the the front of the crib and then the back of the crib these hangers have the hooks I'm sure that everyone has seen those so what I did is I made a jig for that using a router and a pattern bit and then on the jig I put an arrow where up is located these are grooves for these two pieces of plywood and then they just simply get screwed in from the top or nailed in from the top and I do have pictures of that and then using your pattern bit on your router you can just run through this and it's it comes out perfect for the um, mortised hardware um, lastly with this part this is full size for the outside and then you just once you put this together you just use a clamp with your um, edge of your front and back for that part of it but anyway I've got a, a picture that that shows how that's done and then for the very top of the crib mattress, this is the corresponding trim for that. Unfortunately, I didn't have a piece thick enough, so I cut three pieces and glued them together. And then I have included a jig for the slats. So the slats are spaced every two inches apart. I used a V-bit to just come in and make a tick on this. And so with this slat jig, both of these slat jigs, it corresponds with the bottom and then top of your front and then your side panels. So you can mark on your actual lumber where the center is. And then on each slat, I just marked center with a um, square. And then I was able to make my mortises with the um, domino at that point. And then we have the armrest here. And then for the slats on the mattress, after I, and I could have included this on one file, but this was an afterthought. So what I did with the mattress support is I have these little knockouts and I cut some poplar that fits down inside of these slots. So that's where the crib is supported. Okay, so now that I've ran through that, um, I'm sure the majority is pro may probably not be interested in the baby crib itself, but how I made the trim for the back crest rail. So I'll go through how I did that. This is the um, profile of the trim, but we'll go and I'll do a demo of how that's made. So I'm going to add a new sheet. If you've never done that before, it's under the Sheets tab and I'm gonna name this trim demo and then my X and Y is set to 175 inches by 96 inches I'm gonna change this just to right click edit and for the sake of this I'm just gonna make it 48 by 48 inches give us a little bit of room okay for the crest rail um, the crest rail is 47 inches wide and it's 6 inches tall so I have this um, rectangle here so this indicates the crest rail the next thing that I want to do is I want to split this in half this rectangle and I'm gonna left click my um, vertical line that I just made I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna left click the object and then I'm going to go over here to my alignment tools and I'm going to center that line in the middle. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a line and um, I'm going to come over two and a half inches. I'm going to drop this down a little bit. Next, I'm going to take my 
arc tool. I'm going to delete this line and that's the reason that I made this center. I knew that I found center at that point. Actually, I'm going to leave that line there for a second. I'm going to snip the right side. I'm going to snip the top. And I'm going to delete this line. So what we're left with is a rough look of our crest rail. Now, we can tell by left clicking these objects that they're not a complete vector. So we're going to hold the left hand side of our mouse. We're going to highlight. We're going to come over here and join open vectors and we're going to hit join. So now we have one closed vector. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into node edit mode. I'm going to cut this top portion of this vector. I'm going to copy and paste. And I'm going to paste again. And I'm going to paste again. Just because I want to leave this solid here. And it's a pretty good rule of thumb. Um, I've said in previous videos, I like to keep my original parts that I'm making complete. Then I can go back as reference. So you can see that I want, well, not that you can see, but I, I'm actually going to delete one of these. So we want to make our trim, let's say, two and a half inches. I'm going to come down here to offset. And I'm going to offset this. It doesn't matter with this. Outwards right, outwards left. And now we're offset. And you can go into node edit mode and, and join these here, or you can just use a simple line, um, whichever's faster for you. Okay, so what we have now is we have our piece of trim. We have what's called our drive rail. This is gonna be our drive rail to make this molding. So you have a couple of options at this point. Um, I'm going to spin this in Vectric over on the left hand side in your clip art folder you do have some some trim over on that side that you can choose from um, for this one I'm just gonna run through how we can make our own trim so we know our trim is two and a half inches we're going to make a two and a half inch wide block and let's say it's three quarters of an inch. So this will be the outline. Well, this will be what we'll use to make the outline of our trim. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is make a circle. Same thing as before. We're going to highlight, except this time this is a neat function. We can go to the extreme left edge and the up and now we're directly in the corner so from this point we can snip this if we wanted to okay the next thing I think maybe I'll do an arch of some kind all right um, now if we double click this vector that we just have here using the up and down buttons on your keypad you can move this wherever you want to it's a little bit easier than trying to click and drag the same thing works in node edit mode so if I want to highlight the middle of this and bring it down you have that option too you can also stretch it out and it's just a lot easier than trying to use the mouse and get that done so I think the next thing I'll do is I'll come in here and do another arch. We'll do something like that and maybe we will just continue the trim down from that point. So this is the basic look of our trim. 
and I'm cool. and we'll snip this circle away, snip this away. And we're also going to get rid of the bottom part of this. So we're going to cut vector here, cut vector here. And we're just going to delete that. So not a very nice looking piece of trim. And I'm not going to do a whole lot of, of messing around with this. But again, just like I said earlier, you can go into node selection mode. And we can play with this a little bit. Maybe we bring this down some. Bring this over. And for the sake of this, we're going to call this good. We're going to come out of node selection mode. So the next thing we're going to do is with this highlighted here, we're not highlighted, it doesn't matter at this point, but we're going to come over here and create a toolpath. And we're going to go into our molding toolpath. So we want to select the drive rail first. So our drive rail is this outlier. So that's our drive rail. We're going to hold shift and we're going to click on this piece of trim that we made. And it's that easy. The only thing that I'm going to do is actually have to cancel out of here. I'm going to move this drive rail a little bit closer because this is going to be our profile cut to get this trim cut out. So again, we're going to go back, um, open up our, our molding toolpath, and you can see here your gap above toolpath, gap below toolpath. Since I've got this set at three quarters of an inch, the height of this is three quarters of an inch, then we're, we're good. You can use a larger clearance tool, you can set your ramps, and um, here's your ball nose that you're going to use to make the trim. So again, we're going to select our drive rail, we're going to select our trim, we're going to come down and hit calculate. We're going to preview all toolpaths. And there it is. So the other thing that you can do, if you don't want the trim to run, or actually the molding to profile to run this way, the other thing we can do is open up the profile again, and we can hit reverse direction on this molding. Then we can calculate that. And then so the little ball that we created is on the inside edge. But there's... All right, and we'll take a look at um, the machine cutting the molding. This is a 3.6 degree ball nose from Amana. My step over was 8%. Uh, feed rate was 100. And I was able to increase that a little bit. The cut quality was great. So I was able to increase my speed to around 150 inches a minute. And this is the machine cutting the, um, the bun feet. So just a reminder too, I forgot to mention before, mark the one end of the blank so you always rotate that end. This was my second attempt. The first one, I didn't follow my own advice, but did a great job with the feet. And then I just drilled a half inch dowel in the center of the bun foot and then also in the corresponding side of the crib. And then finished it up with some Gilboys wax after some oil. And um, highly recommend Gilboys, silky smooth and also, you know, child safe. And there's the finished product. Thank you for watching.